viridian streptococci in this viridian streptococci we have few important pathogenic organisms in this the most commonly seen pathogenic organism as streptococci mutans and very other few organisms which also causes uh, infection in humans are streptococci sanguis streptococci imitis and streptococci salivaris in all these four organisms streptococci mutans is high yield for the board exams and there is no lance field antigen for this uh, viridian streptococci that means no c carbohydrate and these are non groupable streptococci so, viridian streptococci are alpha hemolytic on blood agar culture media the colonies grow surrounding the colonies we can see a greenish hue because of partial hemolysis the streptococci viridian streptococci <coughs> are resistant to aprogen in aprogen containing media these organisms can comfortably grow the aprogen test is always useful to distinguish between streptococci pneumoniae and streptococci viridans because these two organisms streptococci pneumonia and viridans are alpha hemolytic so to differentiate between them we always prefer to use aprogen test aprogen resistance or streptococci viridans whereas streptococci pneumonia are aprogen sensitive they won't grow in aprogen containing medium these streptococci viridans always synthesize dextrin from glucose dextrin is a carbohydrate which help these organism in adherence always it acts like a glue it always helps this organism to attach to the host cells or host tissues epidemiology these organisms are always found in oral cavity gingival crevices oropharynx and gi tract these organisms are endogenous infection always depends upon few factors status of the host and teeth and the sites that organism can colonize in particular solid surfaces and interfaces in the teeth structure always these organism try to grow the, in the gaps between the tooth structures are the caries areas specific microflora is required for this organism to grow or to in cause infection and they require nutrition nutritional substrates like carbohydrate is very much essential for this organism to cause an infection dental infections <coughs> always occurs in people who are having a poor hygiene and a lot of dental caries uh, caries teeth and uh, when they are having poor hygiene these organism can grow in that areas and they can call and they grow as colonies to make a plug and ultimately they produce uh, the lactic acid whenever this lactic acid is produced we can see uh, the caries dental caries so whenever the dental caries occurs the patient goes to the dental office and in the dental office you can start to see the the doctors start to perform dental therapies these dental therapies <coughs> can ultimately make this organism to disseminate into the blood stream which can ultimately leads to bacteremia so the dental infections and dental therapies can lead this organism to enter into the blood blood stream and which can ultimately leads to bacteremia this bacteremia can cause can lead to cause subacute bacterial endocarditis in people who are having pre existing cardiac problems like uh, rheumatic fever valvular disease or prostatic valve con containing patients they are mostly prone for subacute bacterial endocarditis the dextrin which is produced by this organism helps this organism to attach to the tissues of the human body especially the tooth structures because of this dextrin it makes a biofilm to grow to help other organisms and these organism to make lot of colonies and ultimate and ultimately it can make a dental plaque this dental plaque can stimulate the periodontal infections the gums infections which can ultimately leads to the loosening of teeth pathogenesis the caries suckers the tooth the decayed tooth the caries occurs on the tooth structures because of lactic acid produced by these bacteria these bacteria always utilize carbohydrates for their metabolism and they and they secrete a, a byproduct called lactic acid this lactic acid can disrupt 
the tooth structures like enamel, dentin and pulp which can ultimately lead to caries and dental problems. When the patient goes for a dental therapy or tooth extraction and this tooth extraction or dental therapies uh, can give a chance for this bacteriums to enter into the bloodstream which can ultimately lead to subacute bacterial endocarditis especially as we, all, as we already discussed in the previous slide in pre-existing cardiac conditions people who already had a cardiac problems like rheumatic fever or valvular disease or prosthetic valves dextrin which is produced by this organism <coughs> can provide a foundation layer for the formation of uh, biofilm and ultimately the biofilm is nothing but a dental plug which can stimulate to cause periodontal infection. These periodontal infection can also help this organism to disseminate into the bloodstream and can ultimately lead to subacute bacterial endocarditis. So the dental therapies and periodontal infections can lead this organism to enter into the back bloodstream and ultimately can lead to cause uh, the cardiac problem that is subacute bacterial endocarditis or infective endocarditis. Clinical conditions. These organisms, Wilden streptococci organisms can cause dental infections like dental caries as we discussed previously. The dental caries is caused by the lactic acid produced by these organisms which can cause damage of the enamel and dentin structures which can make uh, a small holes on the dent and the tooth structures and whenever these organisms causes or makes a biofilm like dental plug which can ultimately lead to periodontal infections because of dental caries because of periodontal infections the patients have a high incidence rate uh, to disseminate this organism into the bloodstream which can ultimately lead to subacute bacterial endocarditis or septicemia. When these organisms enters into the bloodstream in people who already had some problem with the heart, these organisms can go and attach to the damaged areas of the heart and can lead to cause endocarditis. Whenever they attach to the heart tissues with the help of dextrin, they can make colonies and they can stimulate the immune system so that all the inflammatory cells reaches to that area and we can start to see the superation in that area which can ultimately stimulate to produce all inflammatory symptoms like fever and the patients also has anemia and these organisms which are growing on this endocardial areas can also discomate or dislodge from that areas and can form into emboli. When these emboli circulate into the bloodstream and reaches to the thin capillaries they can block the bloodstream and can ultimately lead to cause uh, the rupture of blood capillaries and can lead to cause splinter hemorrhages they can lead to cause uh, road spots they can lead to cause genevi lesions they can lead to cause osseous nodes these conditions we can see by subacute endobacterial endocarditis but the subacute bacterial endocarditis is in slow pace that's why subacute means very slow in severity of the infection it is not acute it is not in a fast pace we can also see septicemia generalized septicemia in these conditions diagnosis we can diagnose this organism depending upon grouping or classification of the streptococci these organisms won't come under c carbohydrate classification that is lansfield classification these are non-groupable streptococci so no this comes under non-groupable streptococci and these organisms are alpha hemolytic in nature that means on blood agriculture medium they partially destruct the red blood cells and can pro produce a greenish hue around these colonies and these organisms can be differentiated from other streptococci that is streptococci pneumoniae depending upon the optogen test on optogen test these organisms are resistant these organisms can grow in optogen containing media when compared to strepto streptococci pneumoniae streptococci pneumoniae is optogen sensitive these organisms are facultative anaerobes they perform aerobic respiration but without oxygen also they can survive by fermentation treatment Penicillin is the drug of choice for these organisms. 
but people who are sensitive to penicillin we can give erythromycin for those patients for dental therapies we always must need to give prophylactic therapy the prophylaxis is penicillin before the dental therapy before three days we can give penicillin drugs so that the patient uh, patients will have an uh, exception concentration of penicillin in their bloodstream so that uh, they won't get subacute bacterial endocarditis complications.